it is not necessary for the metabolic rate to go on for the maintenance of transcendental consciousness. In this state, where mind reaches a state of restful alertness, the body should also principally reach a state of restful alertness. And restful alertness on the part of the body should mean that if breath is there, then breath is restfully alert. If the functioning of the body is there, then that functioning has a characteristic of restful alertness. That means it is non-active, it is not active. The body is not active. Metabolic rate is nil. the thunder supports <laughs> metabolic rate should also be nil if mind is in the state of transcendental awareness, that unbounded awareness. But generally In the beginning days of meditation, one does not feel as if the breath has stopped. One feels very, very shallow breathing, but it continues and it continues. It continues. Gaining of the individual breath, hmm, that state of restful alertness will mean the individual breath rests on the level of cosmic breath. That very quiet level of cosmic life where there is no activity. This is what it means, individual breath coming to the level of cosmic breath, when individual mind comes to the level of cosmic mind, a state of no activity. The individual is then fully on the level of cosmic intelligence, cosmic breath, cosmic existence, cosmic life, all that. In that state, the metabolic rate will, will be nil, zero. In the beginning days of meditation, when the stresses are not completely released, hmm? when the stresses are not completely released, then the system does not function and cannot function normally. For the system to function normally, there should not exist any spot of abnormality. There should not be stored in the system any stresses. When all these stresses are released, 
every area of nervous system is functioning normally, hmm? is functioning according to its best ability, then awareness will be unbounded. As long as there exists even one stress in any part of the nervous system, that one stress will be blocking the possibility of unrestricted awareness. That one stress will restrict that awareness, it will restrict. And when unboundedness is restricted, then it's not full potential of the mind yet. Because there is not yet developed full potential of the body. If there is clinging some stress somewhere, then the body is not functioning to its full potentiality. And when the body is not capable of functioning to its full potentiality, then the body is not capable of maintaining that state of restful alertness. And that is the reason why mind also is not in the state of that pure awareness. Maybe the mind has 98 percent of pure awareness, but not just 100 percent. That means Awareness will be fairly uh, boundless, will be fairly boundless, but there will be some, some amount of boundaries, something, hmm? as if we see through a thin layer of fog, we see that a person is coming, but not quite Clearly we see who is coming and all the details are not there, yet we can locate a person is coming. Just like that, one could feel that pure awareness is there, but one would not know whether this pure awareness is really hundred percent pure awareness or it is a little bit hazy, smoky, smoky unbounded awareness something, some little bit of smoke is there, some fog is there, which restricts that pure unboundedness. And due to this, some individuality is maintained. And in order to maintain that individuality, some breathing will have to go on, because to maintain that, that aspect of individuality, maybe two percent, but the individuality has to be maintained. And if individuality has to be maintained, even two percent, then that much amount of breathing has to go on. So breathing may become very small, but it will have to go on. That means metabolic rate may become less, but it will have to go on. And this will be only if stresses are not completely eliminated. If the stresses are all completely eliminated, then when the mind is in that state of unboundedness, then the mind is non-individual. In that state of non-individuality of the mind, hmm? in that state of universality of the mind, there is no need to maintain individuality and therefore there is no need for individual breath. There is no need for metabolic rate. The body will be perfectly in the state of restful alertness. Mind will be perfectly in that state of unbounded awareness. Mind and body go simultaneously. 
if there is a little bit of individuality, then to maintain that individuality, individual breath has to go on. This means when all these stresses have been released, then if we stop all activity, all mental activity, and we transcend, then really pure awareness, really unboundedness, really a state of restful alertness on the part of mind and body both at the same time. And then no metabolic rate. Now, this might raise a very inquiring question. <laughs> Have I not been experiencing transcendental consciousness? Because maybe by now all the stresses have not been released. And if all the stresses have not been released, am I not really transcending? For all practical purposes, on based on our own experience, we can say we are transcending. We are transcending. Because that transcendental consciousness is our experience. But we would not know at this stage what that transcendental consciousness will be like when we are relieved of all the stresses. We know that to be transcendental consciousness, we know that to be unboundedness, because we know what it is. Now, but we don't know yet what that real structure of transcendental consciousness will be when the whole system is completely released from stresses, that is yet to come. And when that comes, then really the breath will cease to come and go. Metabolic rate will not be needed at that time, because then individuality will not be required to be maintained in that state of awareness. But as long as the fog is there, hmm, maybe point not, 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 not one percent of individual fog, till then that much breathing has to be continued. Otherwise, Breath has no place in transcendental consciousness because there is no individuality left whatsoever. Now, there is no need to fear. In that state, in that transcendental state, there is all unboundedness, universality, infinity, no individuality, but that we only take for a while. And what we do is, then we regain individuality. And when we regain individuality, we regain individual breathing process. And then the breath comes and then the individuality is there and then so, when transcendental consciousness develops into cosmic consciousness, then for the sake of maintaining individuality, the breathing continues to be, metabolic rate continues, but because that unbounded awareness is established on the level of the mind, the body assumes a role of no metabolic rate along with some metabolic rate. Mind has to have a dual status in that state, a dual aspect of one status of the mind, two sides of a coin. Mind is active and mind is silent. Mind is silent, mind is active. In that state, 
the metabolic rate assumes a specific role, hmm? assumes a specific pattern where unbounded awareness is naturally maintained and boundaries of awareness naturally maintained. Now, what that specific status of metabolic rate is, it is nothing very much out of the common metabolic rate, even in the state of ignorance of man. It's very interesting. It's very, very, very interesting. In the state of ignorance, what is happening? Ignorance means when one is not meditating and one is not, uh, one has not known what an unboundedness is, one has not known that self-awareness. Hmm? In the ordinary state of consciousness, what is happening? Two levels of awareness are always maintained and this is this, this is the character, this is the display of the metabolic rate that it is capable of maintaining many, many levels of awareness, one within the other, some more on the conscious level some more on the deeper levels. Hmm? The child is running about with that awareness deep within him, mother is at home. Distinctly two levels of awareness. The child runs, I want to play there, but that deep underneath, mother is at home. No one can do anything to me, that safety is there. Hmm? So. Always there are two levels of conscious mind, one deep, which we can say level of feeling, to give it a separate name, level of feeling and level of thinking. These two levels of awareness are always there. Now what happens when in cosmic consciousness that unboundedness is continuously maintained? It is the same level of awareness, mother at home, hmm? security, level of security. Instead of that feeling, mother is at home, hmm? awareness is unbounded. Unbounded awareness at the depth of conscious mind and on that basis, maximum creative intelligence displayed on the level of conscious mind. Just as with that feeling mother at home, the child is very active, very brilliant, bright, he just does not cease to make mistakes and all kinds of things, because there is that security, he does what he wants to do, maximum creative intelligence. Same thing, same thing, nothing other than the likeness unbounded awareness, and then one is doing this and this and thinking this and this and this, all. But all thinking, all doing, everything is with maximum creative intelligence because infinite safety factor is available at the depth of awareness, unbounded consciousness, unbounded awareness. This shows that the metabolic rate in any and every situation is conducive to spontaneous maintenance of two levels of awareness, surface conscious level and deeper conscious level we can say. Deeper conscious level and surface conscious level. Two two levels of conscious awareness is always maintained and the same thing continues to
to happen in cosmic consciousness. Only the quality of the deeper level changes, that's all. Until cosmic consciousness is gained, this deeper level is subject to changes. Sometimes mother is at home, sometimes she is not there, sometimes she is angry, sometimes she is happy, all that. This is variable. But metabolic rate is capable of maintaining simultaneously two levels of awareness. That means the nervous system is so composed, is so constructed that it is capable of handling two levels of awareness for the time being two, huh? later on we will find out how many more. But at least two levels of awareness, one on the surface of thinking mind and the other at the depth of the thinking mind which controls the surface thinking. So metabolic rate is capable of maintaining two levels of awareness. Therefore, metabolic rate is in the same way capable of maintaining two levels of awareness which are the two levels of cosmic consciousness. One unbounded awareness and the other these localized values of perception and action and all that, all that. Hmm? That means, basically, nothing new happens except the quality of metabolic rate which changes the basic quality of these two levels. Thinking level quality changes and that being level or feeling level the quality changes. Hmm? We are not yet talking about the being level, that will take some other day. But at least for the time being, what we find is that when unbounded awareness exists along with the waking, dreaming or sleeping states of consciousness, variable states of the mind and intellect and emotions, all these keep on varying, but that non-variable structure of unbounded awareness becomes steadfast, becomes permanent. And in order to maintain this thing, metabolic rate, same metabolic rate but of a different value, that's all. This understanding takes away from our mind any mysterious imaginations about how can metabolic rate maintain two levels of awareness, non-changing and changing and unbounded and bound? All these questions are solved, all these hmm, doubts are removed with this understanding that already in every walk of life, two levels of awareness are maintained by the metabolic rate. Human metabolism is such a, 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 a process which spontaneously allows mind to have two levels of awareness, one very active and one very silent underneath that active one. Only the silent one in some state is variable and in CC, in cosmic consciousness, it gains the state of non-variable nature. That's all the difference takes place. So, as long as cosmic consciousness has not been gained in terms of the body, as long as all stresses have not been relieved, there will be individual inception in the possible value of cosmic life. The individual life is not completely on the level of cosmic life because these stresses inhibit individuality to gain cosmic reality and boundedness. And therefore, as long as stresses are there, when we transcend, we don't have 
clear transcendental pure consciousness what we have is foggy smoky transcendental pure consciousness and bounded it is but a little foggy not clear and as stresses keep on dissolving more and more and more and more pure consciousness comes to comes to be more and more thoroughly the quality changes quality changes hmm? so transcendental meditation we don't call smoky transcendental meditation <laughs> or, or <laughs> or foggy transcendental meditation we keep the name intact only we know that the quality of transcendental structure is subject to change as long as it can possibly change and when it cannot change then it has reached its ultimate value and that is real pure unboundedness of life and this is that state which we say cc where individual life will be maintained and cosmic reality of life will not be lost the ocean will not be lost and the waves will be enjoyed on the surface both at the same time the waves on the surface will not rob the ocean of its reality relative life will not rob the infinite value of absolute existence both will be there relative and absolute both together it's only a matter of giving ourselves to greater degrees of rest through regular practice of tm and whenever there is a chance to give in for long periods of continued rest <laughs>